Hello, and welcome to the Conexus Credit Union Annual Meeting. My name is Annette Rivette, and I'm the Chief Transformation Officer and Corporate Secretary for Conexus Credit Union, and it's my pleasure to be your host for this evening. I would like to first acknowledge that while we are meeting virtually, we are meeting remotely from across Treaty 2, 4, and 6 territories and the homeland of the Métis. This is an important part of our history and our future. Before we begin the formal part of our meeting, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Tonight's virtual meeting is expected to last approximately 60 minutes. Members, you will have the option to submit questions at any time throughout the meeting, and they will be addressed in the questions and answer, answers portion at the end. We'll show you how to do this shortly. Our parliamentarian for tonight's AGM is Mr. Stuart Wachowski. Mr. Wachowski is also available online if we need to confer with him during the event. The parliamentarian's role is to provide advice to the meeting generally and to the chair in particular regarding the proceedings to ensure that a legal and fair meeting is held. Stuart is a lawyer who is very familiar with rules relating to meetings of credit union members. And finally, as tonight's meeting is our first time hosting a full virtual AGM, please bear with us through any potential hiccups. A recording of tonight's meeting will be available for those members who were unable to attend or should you wish to watch it again. Thank you for your attention. I'll be back with you a bit later to help facilitate the Q&A portion of the meeting. And just before we begin, I would like to confirm for the chair and members that we have achieved quorum for tonight's meeting as we have, a, we have 83 members connected and we require 25 to achieve quorum. It is my pleasure to introduce our board chair, Mr. Joel Mochenko, who will officially begin tonight's AGM. Thank you, Annette. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Annette mentioned, my name is Joel Mochenko and I am the board chair of Conexus Credit Union. So thank you for joining us tonight in this uh, dim different format for our AGM. This is uh, a very important annual event for us and it is a true privilege to be able to connect with our members tonight in a physically distant and safe manner. Now, before we get too far into this evening's agenda, as this is a new platform for all of us, we have a short video showing how to submit questions and comments throughout tonight's presentation, as well as how voting on motions will work. So please be aware your questions will not be anonymous on this platform. And then after the video, we'll have a little fun with a practice vote. On the left, you have the information screen. You will see information pertaining to your event. On the right, you have the broadcast screen. If your meeting is available in more than one language, you will have the ability to select which stream you want to listen to by clicking here. You can expand the broadcast to make it larger by clicking here. The broadcast is now almost filling your screen. You can return to the interactive portion by clicking here. To send a message to the moderator, you click here. At the bottom of the screen, you have a box which will allow you to type in your message or question. Click send when you are satisfied with your message. You will receive a notification that your message was received. Once the moderator has approved your message, it will show up in this window. When a vote is opened, you will see your options presented on the information side of the screen. If you have maximized your broadcast window, it will automatically become smaller so the vote becomes the focus. When you make your selection, it will highlight and you will see a message that your vote has been received. You can change your selection at any time during the voting period. When the voting period is closed, your selection will black out and will be locked in. You will no longer be able to change your selection. Once the results are verified, they will be displayed on the screen or the results will be announced. I would like to encourage you, if you have a question, uh, to send them in any time during tonight's presentation. We'll be answering questions at the end, but you can submit at any time. So now for uh, just a little something fun and an example so we can all practice how voting will work. If you haven't yet on the left-hand side of the screen, move to the comments and questions screen. 
and you should now see an opportunity to vote. We, uh, we, we want to know, how do you feel about pineapple on pizza? Do you love it or should it be left off? So go ahead and vote on this one. And we are going to settle this uh, once and for all. And I'm just going to mention that as voting, the voting process does take a little bit of time. Throughout the evening, I'll be filling in space with a, a few extra little bits of Kinexus info while we're, while we're doing the voting. Hopefully you've uh, managed to find your way through the voting. We're voting open for just another couple of seconds. And voting is now closed. So the intent, the uh, anticipation is building and love it. It is, uh, it is left on by quite a wide margin. How about that? So, uh, so we are sticking with, uh, with pineapple on pizza. The Conexus membership has spoken. Uh, at this time, I would like to welcome all of our members who are joining us tonight, uh, including board members, uh, some former board members I see on the list, uh, even some retired Conexus employees, welcome. Uh, of course, lots of Conexus staff. Uh, so a very hearty welcome to every member who is in attendance tonight. And I'd also like to welcome our special guests and our par partners from across the credit union system who are in attendance tonight. So thank you all for taking the time to be with us this evening. As you will see from the agenda, after some formalities, I will begin the meeting by sharing some highlights from this previous year, especially Conexus's dedication to communities around the province. I'm also pleased to say that tonight we will hear from Anne Perry, the Executive Director of The Circle Project, as our guest speaker. Then we'll hear from Eric Dillon, our CEO, to reflect on this past year, how we're working to improve our members' financial well-being and Conexus's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Eric will also share the financial results of the credit union from 2019. And we will, of course, have time for your questions later on as well. So I would now like to call for a motion to approve the agenda. In order, in order to make a motion, please use the comment chat function and simply write, I move. And I will take the first two names that come through for the mover and seconder. You can, yes, sorry. Okay, Charlene, thank you for moving that motion. Seconder, Ken, thank you. And the vote should now be coming up on your screen. So we'll go ahead and vote on that motion, the, the vote motion to approve the agenda. Please vote no if you are against or yes if you're in favor. And while we're waiting, connects us fun fact number one. So in response to COVID-19, we scaled up our member contact center four times. From mid-March to the end of April, in, in addition to keeping wait times to record lows, the contact center made 5,390 calls out to members to see how they were doing. So well done to everyone working in our member contact center. Voting uh, on the motion to approve the agenda will be open for just a few more seconds. And voting is now closed. And that motion is carried. So the minutes from our 2019 annual meeting that was on April 16th, 2019 are available for your review. I will also need a motion to approve the, the minutes uh, from our 2019 AGM. So once again, use the process as before, writing the comment, I move. And I would also say, if you have any comments or questions on the minutes, uh, you can write those as well now. So can I have uh, a motion to approve the minutes? Thank you, Catherine. And a seconder. Allison, thank you. And then uh, I'm just going to wait for a second or two. If you had any questions or comments uh, on the minutes, you can, uh, you can send those in now. And uh, of course, we will be, we're not receiving any. We will be um, 
responding to all questions at the at the end. So uh, so we'll have another opportunity then as well. So with that, I will open the voting on the motion to approve the minutes from our 2019 AGM. And another Connexus fun fact. So we'll be hearing about our business incubator a little later in the evening, but I wanted to share with you that Cultivator has not only incubated 32 new companies, these companies have created 86 new jobs in the province and have raised $1.7 million in private capital. So to all of our startups and to everyone at Cultivator, great job, keep up the great work. Uh, very proud of you and very proud of the work that, uh, that is being done at Cultivator to, uh, to build the, the economy of our province. A few more seconds uh, for that motion and voting is now closed. So the uh, motion to approve the minutes from 2019. Um, oh, let me just skip ahead there. And that motion is carried. So now that we have some of the formal proceedings out of the way, I wanted to talk with you about how Connex at Connexus, our purpose and values are central to everything we do. They are the guiding light that informs how we move forward with all decisions and actions. Delivering on our purpose, which is to improve the financial well-being of our members and communities, remained at the core of the changes experienced in 2019. It's what guides us through the recent challenges we are all experiencing with COVID-19, and it's what will continue to guide us into the future. I wanna take a moment tonight and give some recognition to all the Connexus employees that have been living our values through this unprecedented time. Our values are be authentic, be bold and creative, and be responsible. And I have seen these values evidently displayed as our team has responded to COVID-19. The teams have been bold and creative in serving members in new ways, while at the same time being responsible for their own health and for the health of members. And I have witnessed a ton of authenticity in acknowledging the challenges being faced by both staff and members through this difficult time. I am so proud of our team in staying true to the Connexus values and when times got challenging to continue to serve and support members in the best way possible. Now we know that many individuals, families and communities continue to struggle with the effects of the pandemic. We at Connexus wanted to say, we see you, we stand with you and we encourage you to stay strong and resilient during this time. We are all one community, one Saskatchewan. So let's keep working together and we will overcome. Connexus is a member owned cooperative that delivers on that delivers personal, business, and agricultural financial services with ease, access, and value now to more than 127,000 members right across Saskatchewan. The reality is that the nature of how our members are engaging with their financial institution is changing. Connexus is responding to meet our members' needs while ensuring that the integrity and dedication of how we serve you will not change. On behalf of myself and the board, I thank you for your continued trust in us as the voice of the membership to strategically lead our credit union into the future. This is something we take very seriously as we navigate the ever evolving financial industry. Last year, we continued to transform our credit union to remain in a strong position to provide what matters to you. Connexus has made a commitment to our members and will continue to serve and support you in a way that delivers on our purpose and values. Through our commitment, we hope that we are creating a relationship that you can rely on and feel supported by well into the future. Of all the changes in 2019, the closure of nine branches across Saskatchewan was by far the most difficult. Throughout the process, Connexus engaged with communities, including holding member information sessions to help ease the transition. Our advisors worked directly with affected members to understand their individual needs and ensure a smooth transition to how we would continue to serve them. As the needs of our members change, we know these decisions are necessary, but it is not lost on us how difficult change can be for all of us. We'd like to sincerely thank our members for their continued relationship with Connexus. 
I am pleased to mention that we retained well over 90% of the business from these communities and are continuing to serve those members today. Even before the pandemic, our advisors were proactively connecting with members to understand their needs and will continue to provide advice and solutions regardless of a member's location. This work continues in an even greater effort today to connect with all our members virtually. We remain committed to the communities that we serve, regardless if there is a physical branch present or not. Part of this commitment was the donation of these branch buildings. The Conexus Board was pleased to donate the buildings, helping to ensure we're fulfilling the Conexus purpose, as full financial well-being means the health of the family and the community. So these donations were the Fifth Avenue branch in Regina was donated to the Circle Project. The Wallace Street branch was donated to Ignite Adult Learning. The Cupar branch to the town of Cupar. The Young branch to the village of Young and RM of Morris. The Drake branch to the village of Drake. The Middle Lake branch to the Three Lakes Economic Development Region. And the Moss Bank branch to the town of Moss Bank. So there are still two more buildings in Chamberlain and Spy Hill that we are continuing to search for new owners. As chair, what makes me most proud is when I can see how the community investment that Conexus commits to annually makes a difference across the province. In 2019, through 151 donations, over $3.1 million was given back to communities across Saskatchewan by our community investment program. And I was personally able to participate in a number of events, including donations to the Cancer Foundation of Saskatchewan, to the Optimist Hill Project in Saskatoon, and to the Mobile Crisis Services and Farm Stress Line. It, is, it was a true honour and privilege to be able to see firsthand how Conexus makes a real difference in the community. You know, it's one thing to make a decision about a donation at the board table. It's an entirely different thing to be part of the presentation and meet the people from these organisations and see in their eyes and hear in their voice the difference that the donation will make. And I try to highlight whenever I can that the donation is not from the board, it's not from the Conexus management, it is from the Conexus members. So that's you. I'm pleased to share now a short video with you that highlights a few of our investments uh, this previous year. And I hope that you as Conexus members can share in my sense of pride for what your credit union is doing in our communities. It's what creates community as much as anything else. There's ebbs and flows in all of our lives. When somebody's going through a hard time, that's your opportunity to lift somebody up. Uh, I think that's truly what creates community as much as anything else. And it, it does just make a person feel really good to feel like they're able to give back to their community. When our university asked for help and did it in a way that creates these really cool opportunities for our community that, that, uh, that haven't existed in Regina for 100 years. We walk alongside our members all the time and support them in their journey about learning about financial independence. What does it mean to be financially well? The joy, the giving, the receiving of a gift, and the joy it can bring to others. But it's really truly about who we are as employees of the organization. Spread a little love, share encouragement, hope, and kindness with the communities that need it most. Sometimes it's the smallest gestures that have the most impact. I would now like to welcome Anne Perry, Executive Director of the Project, who, as I mentioned earlier, is a recipient of our fifth act. Anne oversees all services and is responsible for day to day operations of the Circle Project. She also assists the Council, the Board of Directors, in furthering the mission and holistic philosophy of the Circle Project in the community for the benefit of Indigenous people. Her hands-on approach to management and teamwork has resulted in significant growth for the organization and has been the basis for the Circle Project's service to the community in helping people help themselves. Under her leadership, the organization built a state-of-the-art early childhood facility, opened an infant toddler center, and developed new programs, including the Cultural Connections for Kids program. Anne holds a heartfelt belief in mentorship and leadership development and has been instrumental in the development and growth of many young Indi Indigenous leaders, both at the Circle Project and in the community. 
Now, in the spirit of physical distancing, Anne has graciously pre-recorded her message for us. So thank you, Anne, for being so open to delivering differently to Connexus members tonight. Now let's listen to Anne tell more of the story. We've always been a part of the community and we've always had a presence in the community, which includes building that sense of belonging and building that sense of connection. But just the very fact that anyone who walks through our doors is welcome. We don't know what their story is. We don't know what has brought them to us, but they are treated as a guest and so they should be. David. My name is Anne Perry, and I'm the executive director of The Circle Project. I've been at The Circle Project to actually 25 years, uh, celebrating my 25 years of service in October of last year. The mission of the organization is to provide hope and help in the community. The, the hope for the creation of stronger families, more resilient children, and a stronger and better community. We do that through our programs and services that we offer, which include family violence, addictions counseling, uh, cultural training, and of course our two child care centers, which are the, the jewel, so to speak, in the community. So where we are now, uh, we are actually located in, in what's called a discretionary warehouse area of the city, but it's not the ideal space for an organization such as ours. We may do for many, many years. Our program space has evolved. We've had to make do with many of the spaces and get really creative on how we're using our space uh, to respond to the needs of the community. This is not our space, it's a leased space. It doesn't add any permanence to the community. Let's find a home for the big circle now. Um, and the infant care crisis hit, particularly in the community. So again, as an organization, we had to make a choice. Do we take this little nest egg that we've built and open an infant center to respond to the needs of the community, or do we build a home for the Circle Project? And once again, we chose to invest in the community and open our infant center. We had our business plan in hand um, and high hopes, and we approached our financial institution that we'd worked with for 10 years uh, to request a mortgage and we were turned down flat. There were no conditions or if you do this or do, you know, meet these conditions and then we'll consider it. Nothing, zero. Um, and so we then approached Canaxis. You know, our history with Canaxis goes back a long, long way. Um, I was teasing with our business manager because I talked to him from time to time and said, hey, the Fifth Avenue branch, we need that building. We can make good use of that building. And it was a joke. It was actually on a Saturday morning, I saw it in the newspaper and was shocked to see that there, that there was a request for offers. I wasn't shocked to see that Connexus was doing something different. When we put in our proposal, it was a very sincere proposal and we put in our offer and it was our best offer. Um, and it was something that we really wanted. Right from the beginning, we really wanted it. Our hope was that the language would reflect that and the spirit of the document would carry our intent um, to the people that were actually reading the document and making the decision. Certainly a few hopes and prayers put out into the universe so that um, this would somehow, uh, a way would be made for the project to continue its important community work. The first time that we were actually physically in the building, it had already been closed, and that's when we were allowed to look at the building. Our president, our secretary, and myself were the three people that were there. He said, you know, we've accepted your offer, um, and there's going to, there, but there's one small uh, change in the offer. My heart sunk a little bit, as did the building committee, because it was like, but this is all that we've got, like this is our nest egg. And he said, um, so there's a, a caveat that we'll put in, and the most important thing is we're going to make an adjustment on the price. He presented us with the document, and the, the, the price was $10. <laughs> 
we were over the moon. Like there was, there were no dry eyes. Everyone was in tears uh, because we never expected that. We never expected. Organizations like ours do not get these huge donations. So finally, after all of these years and after all of this time and all of this sacrifice, we will finally now have the opportunity to create a home for Circle Project. To be gifted a building is certainly a life-changing event. It raised the, the value of the work that we do in the community, that it was recognized, um, was a huge boost uh, because it is difficult sometimes uh, to be just continuing on your service work in the community and, and, and not looking for the accolades and not looking for that that constant recognition. First areas that we want to expand is the family violence program and the, the second area is the fa financial literacy program. Um, we need to do something in the community for the individuals that are trying really hard um, to build a life for themselves and their families and they are living in poverty. So many people think that if you live in poverty you don't need budgeting. You need it more than someone that is of means. When we invest one dollar in um, a, a location or a facility like ours that would be a community and cultural hub of the city and the work in the family violence. So, you know, we know that one instance of family violence cost $100,000. What happens when you invest $10, like Conexus did? Uh, what is the impact of that going to be? Last year we had 200, almost 300 people through our program. Considering that each person puts in 20 hours, that's a pretty big impact. Um, I think the most important thing um, was, was not only the, the gift of the building, but the welcome that we got when we finally got a chance to meet Eric in Dallas, um, that, you know, and, and we hadn't met them before, and, and here we've got this huge uh, gift that was donated. They made us feel so welcome, and they made us feel so much a part of the community, and they were so interested in what we were doing uh, with the building, what our future plans were, and they wanted immediately to talk about some future partnership uh, to make that connection. And as an Indigenous organization, this entire gift of the building and the, that extension of that hand of friendship uh, from the corporate world into the Indigenous world is something that we see as a huge act of reconciliation. This gift from Conexus will make it a positive difference in the Indigenous community for many years to come. Thank you, Anne, for sharing more about the Circle Project Foundation and your vision. Uh, as many of you may know, Connexus Credit Union agreed to donate $1 for every vote cast in our director election, and also for every member joining us online tonight. And that adds up to a donation of $5,500. And we are pleased to say that tonight's donation will be made to the Circle Project. Now I would like to introduce Eric Dillon, the CEO of Connexus Credit Union for the CEO report. Eric. Thanks uh, very much, Joel, and uh, thanks uh, to Anne for sharing more about uh, Circle Project Foundation. It's, uh, it's a super exciting project and um, maybe more importantly, and thanks to you and everyone on your team for what you're doing in our community to, uh, to make a difference. Well, thanks everybody. It's great to uh, have you online with us tonight. Uh, I was a bit sad today, to be honest, that I uh, wasn't connecting with members the way we normally do at the Connexus Art Centre. Uh, but of course, COVID has meant many changes um, to, to our business and to our community, and this, this AGM is just uh, another one of those changes. Uh, like many organizations, we've had plans in place to manage extraordinary uh, events around, uh, around COVID-19, and needless to say, 
that having a major pandemic uh, together with an economic crisis at the same time was not something that we had a specific scenario for. Uh, we did, however, act very quickly and moved nearly 50% of our employees to work from home. Uh, we split our teams into different groups to manage cross-contamination and we used all of the empty space that we had uh, to create safer uh, spaces in the workplace. And for those that have been in our branches, you'll notice uh, additional safety measures were also created there with the addition of some employees out front doing what we would call lobby leadership. Uh, we supported members in thinking about how to bank differently uh, or online through the phone or an ATM. And then of course, if you were in the branch, you noticed that uh, the branches were all outfitted to make sure that everyone, both the members and our staff uh, stayed safe when they were, were required to come. As Joel touched on earlier, we did significantly add to our member contact center, uh, which resulted in an average wait time of just seconds for the past uh, two months. I think it was about 25 seconds we averaged. And so we worked very hard to make sure that uh, members weren't kept waiting when, when they needed us most. And as Joel said, we had lots of our advisors reaching out proactively to members, helping them with things like skip payment or adjusting budgets or accessing federal assistance programs. We rolled out electronic signing of all of documents so members uh, could do almost anything they were required to do from the safety and comfort of their, uh, of their own home. And when we felt our members were effectively set up to bank differently, we then changed the branches to what we've called service by appointment. So again, you don't have to wait in line or on hold to see us. I uh, just phone and let us know uh, what, when you'll be down to which branch and we're happy to look after you. And we wanted you to know that when a crisis hits, the last thing you uh, need to worry about is access to money. And so we worked very hard uh, to make sure we could help you. Uh, and I'm astounded through the pandemic that uh, we have a key financial uh, health measure inside of Connexus that we use to measure the financial success of our members because uh, as Joel said earlier, it's what we do. We were quite shocked that uh, the financial health indicator for our members actually increased, uh, providing some peace of mind for what is clearly a very stressful time for our members and all of our communities across the province. Uh, I would like to certainly thank our members for their patience as we work through these changes and also the entire Connexus team worked very hard uh, to protect our members' health while ensuring access to, uh, to their banking account. Uh, so now back to what the AGM is supposed to be about, and it's really just a review of the previous year. Um, part of the great history of credit unions, uh, and lots of the members on will know, is that they've always supported businesses and been there through some other very challenging th times like the Great Reche Recession or the global financial crisis. Uh, we believe strongly in our history of building communities that, uh, and it's those communities that support the growth uh, throughout Saskatchewan, and, and we believe that Cultivator will do just that. And so last year we launched a first of a kind business incubator, and as Joel mentioned, called Cultivator. And, uh, and again, today supporting over 30 Saskatchewan founded startups. And uh, if you are uh, following Cultivator online, we have another call out for the next cohort of um, wonderful Saskatchewan startups. We even had our first virtual pitch event just a few weeks ago, and it was really cool. We had 150 people on a Zoom call from across Canada listening to the great ideas that uh, these founders have for uh, building new Saskatchewan businesses. Um, and so, but instead of listening to me talk about their success, we thought the best thing to do was to show you a little video of what happens when some of these founders uh, get together to celebrate.
Every time I uh, see that video, I get goosebumps thinking about how much that's exploded in Saskatchewan in recent years. And really, if you look at those uh, those founders building those companies from a dream or a problem they've uh, they've experienced that they know how to fix. It's uh, it's powerful to watch. You know, as those startups grow and scale, they create a more diverse economy and more prosperity for uh, for all of us here in Saskatchewan. And we want local businesses, frankly, to stay and grow right here at home and to create jobs in Saskatchewan. But I would say traditionally, our technology startups were underfunded and overlooked. And we, we knew that that needed to change. And that's why in July of 2019, we launched the Connexus Venture Capital Fund, the first in Canada established by a credit union. We have exceptional entrepreneurs here in the province and we believe in investing in them will drive outsized returns for investors, for our members and for our communities. And we weren't alone. When we started uh, fundraising, it quickly grew to just over $32 million with additional investors from all over the province, including many of our partner credit unions, providing very precious capital to local companies and keep local businesses, well, local. Uh, so we're really excited to have a few of the companies uh, that we've invested in on the slide in front of you. Of course, for them, COVID has brought significant challenges uh, as, as they're learning to grow and scale their business, but we still believe in you and we're working hard to help you through these challenging times. Of course, at Connexus, we, um, as you've heard from Joel and myself, building communities is just part of what we do and that doesn't mean just helping businesses, it also means answering calls for help. So in our university, the University of Regina put out a call for development partners for a College Avenue campus, we knew we had to answer the call. University of Regina specifically sought proposals for development on land already marked for potential future development. And by building next to our call, we've helped save the University of Regina millions and preserved our call as a world-class performing arts center. The project provides 8.25 million in direct financial support to the university's plans to save the historic College Avenue campus. An additional 10 million in savings and shared services, such as the mechanical, the dark hall lobby and link space, and accessibility enhancements in the theater, such as an elevator. The building will also have space for cultivator in the Connexus Venture Fund and allow them to almost triple their size from the temporary space at the university campus so we can grow even more Saskatchewan startups and create more jobs. And it'll also have public spaces, washrooms, water filling stations, and a new cafe run by another great local Saskatchewan entrepreneur. If you haven't been in the renovated College Avenue building since it opened last year, when all this COVID stuff is over. I'd encourage you to go have a peek. It is a stunning uh, facility for our community and we're so thrilled that it's open and again serving uh, Regina and Southern Saskatchewan. College Avenue is rapidly being restored to the educational and cultural hub of our city and we're very, very proud to be part of it. Uh, the building will be complete in the next month or two and the opening of the building of course will be guided by the reopen Saskatchewan plan to ensure that everyone involved in construction is safe and able to follow proper social distancing protocols in response to the pandemic. The slides that you see here give you a little sneak peek of what the building looks like uh, both on the outside and the inside and we'd love next year to be hosting our annual meeting uh, from the flex space with our call. In 2019 we also made significant changes for our members. Uh, the global payment card that lots of our members uh, knew and loved was discontinued uh, across the country and as part of that change we had 25,000 cardholders that were transitioned to new payments products. In addition to this change a few other uh, notable products and service changes were made last year including implementing auto pay which allows members to have their entire monthly credit card payment automatically deducted from their Connexus account. We introduced lots of new payment products to keep pace with all of the things happening in the market there whether it's Apple Pay or the like. And we recently partnered with a leading fintech firm called Judy AI to use information automatically pulled from a variety of credit and other non-traditional sources to more quickly uh, allow us to approve small business loans. So a process that in some cases used to take a few days now takes six minutes. And we can't forget that in 2019, we're very excited to partner with Fendasta, another one of Saskatchewan's largest and leading tech companies. And we created the Connexus Hub Marketing. The hub stands for helping you beyond banking and it's really a digital marketing solution for small business and, you, and I'm sure you can appreciate in today's world how important that might be. 
So it helps any of our business members with everything from logos to website to development, to managing online customer feedback, to social media presence. We launched it to 10 businesses in December with very positive results. And many more of our member businesses have taken advantage of the Connexus Hub early in the first few months of 2020. Joel talked about this thing called financial well-being, and it's it's not something we just talk about at Connexus. It's something we believe passionately in. So last year, we changed our balance scorecard, which is really the report card of the credit union, and it now measures the financial well-being of our members as one of the key metrics. And our employees, unlike anywhere else in financial services, not in Saskatchewan, but perhaps in the world, are now rewarded based on how our members are doing financially not by how many extra products or credit cards that they happen to sell that day. We know from talking to our members that people need advice perhaps more uh, than they need additional financial products. At the same time, we know that 2019 was very difficult financially for many in the province. And again, we're proud to say that despite a slowing economy in Saskatchewan, you know, our members, um, we, they made unbelievable progress in 2019. Um, much like today, we want to make sure that we're here when you need us. Even when you don't think you need us, we're certainly at the ready uh, for anything that might come up. But financial well-being isn't just a statement about your credit rating, it's so much more. So we've created this our own proprietary measure so that we can track how our members are doing in very real time. And so on the slide, financial health plus financial wellness equals financial well-being, and that's the uh, really at the core of the Connexus strategy. And both of these have a massive impact on a person's life. Healthy financially well-being means a person will have reduced stress and better able to meet the goals and dreams that our members have for themselves and their families. All this talk about financial well-being is fine, but we know that helping people better understand money starts well before you're at your first job or thinking about a house. Learning about money should begin while you're still in school. We all know that. And having a solid understanding of finances provides a springboard for your future. So Connexus was very active in lobbying the provincial government to include this important training in the provincial curriculum. And uh, I remember uh, the day very fondly standing in the room as government made the announcement that financial literacy was now offered as an elective for students in Saskatchewan, one of the few provinces in the country to make that change. And Connexus was a very big part of that. We're very excited about that. But the proof is really in the pudding. And so, as I said earlier, that you know, even though we had a you know a more challenging economic year in 2019, we know that our members were feeling that our the financial well-being of our members actually increased in 2019. And so, as I said earlier, even the last 10 weeks with a financial or a, a lifetime pandemic gripping Saskatchewan, the financial health of our members has increased, and this time by more than just a little. And of course, people are home more saving money and so we're trying to give them the best advice on how to be more resilient through again a very challenging time um you know but you know we talk about numbers at connexus but for me it's always about the members behind the numbers and i got a note just yesterday uh, from a member and it said today is my first time attending the branch for banking by appointment i have specific mobility issues your staff at the front door your tellers and my advisor went beyond what was expected and the service was simply outstanding. Well thought out, well organized, keeping all of us safe. Thanks for what you're doing to look after all of us. That's why we make a difference. We, you know, at Connexus, we just care differently about our members and that's how that care shows up, even at a time like this. I do wanna to touch just briefly on the financial results. Again, if you want to review the reports in detail, you can review our complete financial statement or our management discussion analysis documents. You can find them all at www.connexus.ca. Um, but in a nutshell, 2019 was uh, certainly a time of slower growth given the economic conditions. We had asset growth of just under 5% at 4.7%. Our regulatory capital position was strong again with risk-weighted capital of 13.4% and our return on assets of 0.55%. Uh, so all of that means Connexus continues to add precious capital to ensure we have the strength to weather difficult conditions like we're faced with right now, and that we have the resources at the same time to continue invest in the next 85 years of serving members. Again, if you wanted to read those uh, detailed reports, uh, you can find them all online at nexus.ca. And if you had any questions about those, uh, reach out to any of us at Connexus and we'd be very happy to answer those for you. So I think at this point I'll pass the stage back to Joel uh, to continue with the meeting. 
Thanks, Eric. Uh, so as uh, Eric mentioned, our uh, 2019, uh, he was talking about our 2019 financials and uh, mentioned that our disclosed audited financial statements are publicly available at connexus.ca for all of you to review at your convenience. Our auditor this past year was Carrie Carson, local partner for Deloitte, and she is online with us this evening. So if you have any questions about the audited financial statements for 2019, please include those into the chat and we will address those during our question and answer time. So as we move forward, I would like to ask for a motion to appoint Deloitte as the auditors for Connexus for the upcoming 2020 year. Again, please use the comment chat function and simply write I move. We'll take the first few first two names as mover and seconder for that motion. Thank you. That motion is moved by Ken Kozlowski and seconded by Mark Bergeris. And um, so the, yeah, the motion uh, to approve Deloitte as auditor should now be on your screen. And so please vote no if you are against and yes if you are in favor. So while we're uh, doing that voting, our next Connexus fun fact so our CEO, Eric Dillon, claims to have the most COVID-19 resistant hairstyle. Uh, so that's, you know, that's something to consider. So, you know, if you've ever poked fun at Eric about his hair, well, or, well, you, you know what I mean, the, the tables have now turned. I think that Eric was actually secretly lobbying that barbershops and hair salons stay closed a little bit longer so he could maintain his, his advantage. And the voting on that motion is now closed. And the results are in and that motion is carried. So Deloitte will be our auditor for 2020. So now with the financials complete, I'd like to welcome back Annette as both the moderator for the evening as well as our corporate secretary for Connexus Credit Union. And she will be sharing the results of the 2020 director elections, Annette. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Keeping in mind the changes to our bylaws regarding moving to an at-large director election structure last year, I'm pleased to re-announce the results from this year's director election, which was conveyed to all members last month. And that is that Annette Bester, Mark Borgeris, Carla Hardcastle, who was re-elected, and Ken Kozlowski were elected this year. Congratulations to all of you and welcome to the Connexus Board of Directors. Annette, Mark, Carla, and Ken joined the Connexus board officially on April 8th. The certified results were announced publicly on behalf of our scrutineer, Mr. Greg Pinch, who's also joining us this evening at that time. It is also important to recognize and thank those members that let their names stand for election. The director election process is an important part of being a cooperative. Thank you so much for participating actively in your credit union. On behalf of the board, in order to finalize this year's election, I would like to ask for a motion to destroy all records pertaining to the 2020 director elections. Again, please use the comment and chat function and simply write I move and I'll take the first two names that appear on the screen. Kim Rood has made the motion and Dan Anderson has seconded. Thank you both. So now the motion to destroy the ballots should now appear on your screen and please vote no if you are against or yes if you are in favor. And again, I'm going to give you a little fun fact. So um, at the start of the crisis, one of the things that we realized very quickly was that we needed to manage the flow of traffic into our branch and we received almost 50 volunteers from our staff to help our branches manage the people traffic in and around our busiest locations. These staff members also helped our members learn different ways that they could bank and 
complete their transactions. So thank you to all of our staff that stepped up and uh, were willing to host so many of our members into the branches during that difficult time. So just waiting on the results. And that motion is carried. Thank you all of you. I also wanted to say that on behalf of all of us at Connexus, we extend a sincere thank you to Curtis Kozolowski, Malcolm Eaton, and Rick Pattison for their service and dedication to the Connexus board. Each of these individuals demonstrated their passion and dedication in their oversight role as a director. Their commitment to Connexus and the credit union system is greatly appreciated. And I just wanted to take one more quick minute to recognize our board chair, Joel Mochenko. Joel has been given a five years, Joel, sorry, Joel has given five years of service to the credit union system serving on our board. And we wanted to acknowledge his dedication and service to Connexus Credit Union. Just as soon as we are able to meet in person, we do have a certificate recognizing Joel for his years of service. Thank you very much, Joel. So at this time, Eric and Joel are now open for questions. I believe we have at least one question that's come through, but would invite anyone else to bring in some to raise questions. It's my pleasure to be your moderator for this portion of the meeting. As questions are submitted online and sent to me, I will be reading the questions aloud and then either Eric or Joel will respond. To be respectful of your time tonight, we will try to keep the Q&A portion to about 10 minutes. That said, both the board and management are available year round to answer any questions that you might have. And we encourage you to visit our website at www.connexus.ca for the list of ways you can reach us. So we'll walk through as many questions as we can during this available time. So I have a question from Josh Campbell. He thanks us for the meeting and how well it's organized. Thank you, Josh. He lives in the Heritage neighborhood in Regina, and he's concerned about the closure of the Wall Street and Victoria Avenue branch. This branch was one of the few inner city banks available. I know these are tough decisions to make, but I think that being a community-minded cooperative would mean keeping branches like Wall Street open. What were some of the factors that went into closing this branch, and what's the plan for the members in the inner city to find convenient banking services? Thanks so much. Eric or Joel, Joel, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe uh, respond first and then uh, if Eric has anything else to, to add. Um, so thanks very much for that, uh, that question, Josh, and uh, appreciate that you recognize how difficult those, uh, those decisions are to make and just want to uh, reaffirm that, that these are not decisions that the board entered into lightly but uh, took a long time and did a lot of deliberating on that, on these decisions, and it's not lost on us uh, the effect that these have on on the members of the communities. Um, there are there are numerous uh, factors that go into the decision around closing a branch. Um, a, a lot of it has to do with uh, how members are accessing financial services, and. You know, we we use the the saying that uh, banking is no longer a place you go, but it's a thing you do. But I would also add, in in those communities, um, we were observing that members were not choosing to go into the branch, and sometimes that's because they they are wanting to do banking uh, virtually or through other channels. But uh, sometimes there may be other things that were preventing uh, our members in those communities from wanting to go into a branch, and. Um, and so we we are determined to to figure that out and to figure out um, uh, how do we serve all of our members better. And so we're looking at uh, different things of, of community financial services and different ways to uh, to provide those. And you know maybe I could turn it over to Eric just to just to quickly maybe mention a few of the things that we're that we're doing. Thanks, Joel. Uh, yeah, great question, Josh. So just to touch on what Joel talks about is we, um, we're thinking about a program and internally it's called Community-Based Financial Services and we would reached out to a few organizations, uh, particularly in those communities that you referenced. Uh, we certainly reached out to Anne and the team at the Circle Project. We've also reached out to Murray at the North Central Community Association. 
and uh, and others at the at the Mama Center. And I and I think what we're trying to figure out is how can we actually take financial services out of a Connexus office and right into the community. And you maybe saw reference in Anne's video to some work around financial literacy. And so we had um, big plans to try to pilot something. Uh, before our annual meeting and then of course got derailed a bit in the last uh, 10 weeks or so but it's still on our radar to try to take a community-based approach uh, to banking right into the community out of a branch and into the places that we know uh, people are congregating where we think we can actually help them better than we were in our branch thanks again for the question that's great thank you eric and joel um, I don't see any other questions. Maybe we'll just give it a minute in case any members have any questions that they want to pose at this time. Okay, we will uh, maybe let Joel go ahead and close the meeting then. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Annette. Uh, so i just like to again point out that our annual report and our audited financial statements are available at connexus.ca and this also includes a management discussion and analysis document that enables you to assess the material changes in the financial performance of connexus and a more detailed explanation of the financial statements and notes so if there is no other business i would like to ask for someone uh, to move that we conclude the annual meeting for tonight so can i have a motion to adjourn thank you catherine so with that motion we will conclude tonight's meeting thank you to everyone for joining us this evening uh, please remember that connexus is here for you so just give us a call anytime and let us know how we can serve you stay safe and take care take care of one another thank you <laughs>